see their screens go blank. These eruptions are so big that you couldn't really see them because you couldn't be close enough to the volcano and watching it and survive. You could watch it from satellite. You could see the volcano erupt. You could see the, the ash cloud begin to spread. The explosion would incinerate everything within a hundred mile radius and send a massive cloud of poisonous ash racing across the plains. It would take less than half an hour to cover all of Wyoming and cross into South Dakota. It is five hours to get across the state of South Dakota. So I'm not sure you could ever really outrun it. You would have to try to keep people inside. You know, you'd really just try to, to store up. Definitely there'd be panic. There'd be uh, men's hearts failing for fear, you know, for what's coming on the earth. For emergency personnel in Rapid City, there'd be only one thing they could do as they watched the cloud engulf their town. Say a prayer and hope for the best. You're not going anywhere, so unless you can walk fast. Once the cloud hit, evacuation would be impossible. The drifts of ash would be over eight feet deep and heavier than snow. The ash would be so thick that it would clog all internal combustion engines, stranding rescuers. A scenario that puts us where we can't reach the people, I mean, that's, that's the ultimate nightmare for somebody in my position. The answer I don't like giving is people are going to go without our assistance. Almost immediately, anyone outside would be suffocated by the cloud of toxic sulfuric ash. People inside would discover that their houses provided little protection. If you're in any building which isn't very, very well constructed, then the amount of ash accumulating could cause the, the roofs to collapse and you would die uh, as a result of building collapse. Those who managed to survive would have nowhere to turn. Within a week, the ash would have immobilized the entire country. If the super eruption happens at Yellowstone, you're looking certainly at the United States beginning to fall apart. You have two-thirds of the country covered in ash. That ash is washed into the river systems. It turns to mud. It clogs the rivers. You have massive flooding right the way across the Midwest. Planes could not fly. Trucks couldn't drive. There'd be no way to deliver food to the millions whose supplies were running out. I think it'd be sheer panic. I think you'd see looting like you would in big city riots. It would be every man for himself, to be honest. It would be uh, dog eat dog. It would be what you would expect to find in a, in a, a post-apocalyptic situation. Within weeks, temperatures would begin to plummet as the sulfuric gas created by the eruption spread all the way around the globe. Gradually, the skies would become more and more overcast worldwide. This veil of sulfur gas, which would spread out across the planet, would start to become very, very effective at cutting out solar radiation. Then you would start to see temperatures falling as, as the, the, this effect of solar radiation being blocked out really began to hit home. The entire planet would be plunged into an ice age that would last for years. It will be extremely difficult to grow uh, crops and we would face something like a, a global harvest failure, global famine. If the experts are right, a year after the eruption, the only survivors would be those people who had banded together and figured out a way to grow food in this new world. We'll have to go back 200 years to where we actually cooperate and our focus will be entirely local because it's only local resources that we're going to be able to exploit with any reliability for a, maybe a generation. I can't see any situation where the human race is wiped out. There, there are just too many of us. So we will get through it, I'm sure. Um, but I'm not quite sure what our civilization will be like when we come out the other side. When we continue, this asteroid on Friday the 13th, April, 2029 will come close enough to Earth to dip below our communication satellites. Next, number four on our countdown.
If you want to think of something really humbling, consider this. 99.9% .9 of the creatures that walked the earth before us are now extinct. Some were bigger and more powerful than we are, so why did they disappear? The answer lies in number four on our countdown. Could their fate ultimately be ours? When I look up at night and I see a quiet sky, all I could think of is that it's a shooting gallery with wayward asteroids that have us in their sights. Asteroids are chunks of rock believed to be the debris left over from the birth of the planets. They can be as small as a grain of sand or as large as the state of Texas. I'm not worried about the black hole crumbling Earth. I'm not even worried about the gamma ray burst. I'm worried about the next asteroid. The average handgun fires a bullet at approximately 1,000 feet per second. The average asteroid travels more than 60 times faster. And when a large enough one of these cosmic cannonballs hits a planet, the effects are catastrophic. Look at the moon. Every night it comes out to remind us that on cosmic scales, the universe is violent. The universe can be catastrophic. There are tens of thousands of craters on the moon, and each was caused by an asteroid impact. Even more have collided with the Earth, but weather has softened the scars. We have a polite word for them. They're the near-Earth objects. But really, these are the things that can render us extinct. The last species to witness a giant asteroid collision didn't live to tell about it. 65 million years ago, there was a major asteroid strike just off the Yucatan Peninsula. That almost certainly was the primary cause of the extinction of the dinosaurs. One of the few species that survived that impact were tiny scavenging rodents that lived deep underground. With their main predator out of the picture, 65 million years later, those mammals evolved to take over the planet. It's this two-edged sword. The asteroid that took out the dinosaurs enabled mammals to form whole branches of the tree of life that led to us. So, do you love the asteroids or do you hate them? To keep us from going the way of the dinosaurs, a network of professional and amateur astronomers around the globe are combing the galaxy. They map and name every asteroid they find, and so far they've located more than 100,000. One was discovered recently, the end of 2004. Fine, it was a new asteroid. Who cares? Until you start plugging in the orbital parameters into your computer. You plug those in and then you watch where it goes. You can project forward where you expect to find this thing in the future. You know what we found? This asteroid, on Friday the 13th, April 2029, will come close enough to Earth to dip below our communication satellites in orbit around Earth. This asteroid called Apophis will just miss us on this go-around. However, depending on how the Earth's gravity affects its orbit, we may not be so lucky when it returns seven years later. Depending on exactly where it passes in 2029, there's a decent chance, small, but uh, a very noticeable chance, uh, one in a few thousand that it will then strike the Earth in 2036, actually on April 13th again. If Apophis does hit the Earth in 2036, the effect would be devastating. It would create a tsunami hundreds of feet high that could race across the ocean at supersonic speeds. It's big enough to create the worst damage to life on Earth in recorded history. While the impact could wash away large parts of California, Apophis is not big enough to wipe us out completely. And luckily, odds are we'll dodge this bullet. But scientists say sooner or later, Earth will be in the sights of a much bigger asteroid, one big enough to wipe out civilization entirely. So what is humanity doing to address this deadly threat? The 
number of people worldwide who are working actively on this problem is enough to staff one shift at a McDonald's. And that's about accurate. If we discovered tomorrow that a huge asteroid was hurtling toward Earth, the world's attention would turn toward NASA astronauts Ed Liu and Stan Love, who've developed what experts say is perhaps the best plan to save the planet. And here's something that we have a chance to not just control, but prevent. The asteroid will miss the planet, no damage done whatsoever, if we can do this properly. Regardless of what we see at the movies, the one thing we don't want to do is blow the thing up. All that would do is transform one big asteroid into thousands of smaller ones that could cause even more damage. Instead, these NASA astronauts say that with enough advance warning and a big enough ship, they could fly millions of miles into space, rendezvous with the asteroid, and use the ship's gravity to nudge it slightly off its deadly course. The tiny gravitational pull between the asteroid and the spacecraft will be enough to pull an asteroid onto a new orbit so that 10 years later the asteroid misses the Earth rather than hitting it. That's the theory anyway, but it's still just a theory. There is no spacecraft yet, not even a blueprint. If we can put their plan into action, perhaps it will save humanity. If they fail, scientists would know decades in advance the moment of impact leaving each of us to live with the knowledge of the exact day our world was going to come to an end. There'd probably be a lot of people who were, uh, you know, sort of, well, let's party. We don't have much time left. There'd be other people who'd say, well, I'm going to spend my time praying. Uh, there'd probably be other people who were, you know, determined to survive and, you know, would go and try to find some way to optimize their chances. Even though there'd be little chance for survival, it's difficult to imagine that humanity would go down without a fight. Regardless of our chances, some would probably try to build self-sufficient communities deep beneath the Earth. As our expiration date grew nearer, governments might collapse and the money they back might become worthless. And society would have to discover a new set of rules. I think as we get closer, as that, that sand of time runs out of the hourglass, it'll be much harder to enforce the rules and to, to continue the behavior that we had up to that time. How would you behave if you knew the date of your death? Would you go to work, pay your bills, mow your lawn? As the final days approached, would our lives descend into chaos? Or would we band together and look for something more? I think what's going to happen is if we see this, this asteroid coming, and we're in a situation where we're not really sure what to do, we're going we're gonna to look for love. We're going to look for understanding. We're going to kind of hold on to what we have. And for those people that have no one, they're going to frantically search for the comfort that they can have as time slowly ends. Finally, one day, all of those left on the surface would wake up and know that it was the last day, then the last hour, and then the last minute. I like what they always show in Hollywood as the asteroid comes, people hear it and they look up and they see this flaming ball moving. These objects are moving 10, 15 miles per second. That is hypersonic. You're not going to hear it, you're not going to see it. It takes it a few seconds from when it first hits the top of the Earth's atmosphere to when it actually touches down. During those few seconds, it glows not red hot, not yellow hot, white hot, getting up into violet hot. And that is so hot that if you were anywhere on Earth in the big circle of uh, maybe a thousand miles diameter, where you could actually see this thing coming down, the heat and light coming off of it would just burn you to death immediately. Then it hits. And it starts digging the crater. It takes a long time for a big crater to form. Maybe a minute as the Earth, what you think of as solid rock, gets splashed out by this enormous impact. There would be massive tidal waves and earthquakes, but the worst part would be the gigantic mushroom cloud of debris that would reach all the way into space. An asteroid that size is large enough to thrust large quantities of Earth's crust into the atmosphere. Within as little as an hour, even people on the opposite side of the planet would begin to feel the effects of the impact. If you look up at the sky, and you, you might see a few shooting stars. Even as daylight, you might see a few shooting stars. 
quickly thereafter, you see you know, like 10,000 shooting stars per every square centimeter, several tens of thousands per every square inch.